I was slightly nervous, but before my Cambridge interview, I'd also had my, um, well, I'd put in my application for like Warwick and I'd gotten my offer from Warwick. So I was a bit more, I'd gotten my, well, I'd gotten my offer from another university. So I was a bit more comfortable going in thinking, okay, I've got something to lean back on. Um, but other than that, I was nervous because everybody had been telling me it's a difficult interview. <laughs> so I was like, okay, it's a difficult interview. Stressed, anxious, I mean. <laughs> Yeah. How else would you feel? I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's your feelings, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Before my interview, I was actually really sick. Um, this is not like, not like vomiting sick, but I was like, I had like a flu and I just suppressed it for the day of my interview. So I was, I was literally dying internally. I could feel my body temperature rising. And like the day after I had to take the day off from like all my classes because I just like, I just couldn't think. Um, so yeah, I was stressed and ill before my interview. I think like most people did or will, just, you know, not quite sure what's going to happen. Um, I know different colleges have different sort of interview styles. Some colleges, they require you to do a sort of presentation. Others, like my college, care only about technical questions. But they didn't even ask me about my personal statement. So yeah. I was really not prepared. No, no, no. I, I felt, no, no, <laughs> I felt, I felt unprepared, even though I, um, I did everything, all the right steps. I, I got quite scared um, near the interview because, uh, you know, you always hear that there's so many courses or uh, p you can pay people to prepare you extensively. And I also heard that people uh, started preparing since, I don't know, since they finished their GCSEs. Yeah. And I was always, because when you look for interview preparation techniques and, um, and resources, there are always these courses like that. Mm -hmm. So just looking at that, I thought, oh, perhaps people actually purchase these courses and they're way more prepared than me. So I had mixed feelings after the interview. So I applied to Trinity College and Trinity College has two interviews. And the first one went quite well. Um, I talked through some problems with the interviewer and she was very like responsive and receptive to what I was saying. We worked through the problems. It kind of, it worked really well and I felt good coming out of that interview. So I was, I was like solid ground. Let's go into my second interview. And then I got like, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the, the harsh reality of Cambridge slammed into me in the second interview and I had no idea what I was doing. Well, I don't know. It was just, I, I thought, the first one didn't go that well, the second one went well, so, you know, mixed feelings, I guess, but did you, did just, you, you know, what happens. Did you feel like you were going to get your place in Cambridge after your interview, or were you kind of a bit 50-50? Yeah, 50-50, yeah, I mean, you can never be sure, yeah. I guess, yeah. I thought it was a write-off. I went in, I, some guy asked me a question, the interview asked me a question, and I said an answer, and he said, unfortunately, that's wrong. I was like, nice, this is it, goodbye Cambridge. My, I came home to my car, to my mom, I was in the car, she, was, she asked how it went and I said, I'll apply to another place as well. I don't think Cambridge is taking me this year. Year in industry be looking really good right now. Um, so yeah, I thought it went quite, I enjoyed it. That being said, it was a very fun interview, not fun in the sense of yeah. I love in, being interviewed, but unlike other interviews and stuff I'd done in the past, I actually felt like I learned something out of it. I came out with a misunderstanding. That's, where, that's when the guy said I was wrong. Then I worked through the problem with him. He made me draw some force diagrams and I learned the correct answer. So I felt like I came out of it learning something. Oh God. Um, well, I had two interviews and they're both technical interviews. Um, the first one, you know, when you, when, when you know sort of when you've got a question right and you know when you're right steps and you know, I made a few mistakes. I think I failed to apply Newton's third law correctly at the first questions. And then my interview sort of stared at them and gave me the, oh no, he's a sh sorry, he's a bad candidate. Um, <laughs> that's sort of vibe. But um, no, I think, I, I think it was okay. And in fact, the questions they asked, I had not seen before. So yeah. if you don't think if you've gone through all the questions and the resources I mentioned earlier, that you can ace it because 
there are lots of problems and derivatives they can ask you. Um, the second question was more sort of open-ended. Um, it was more of a thinking problem. I did so badly. It was, it, I still have sort of, you know, not quite nightmares, but I, I still, you know, uh, it's, it's the, the, the image is etched vividly in my mind. Um, I'm not going to tell you what the question was because, you know. Do you, do you think it's common for people to feel yeah, like yeah, badly yes. in an interview? Yeah. Um, my brother also applied here and he was crying after his interview. Uh, different subject, but yeah. he, he got in. I just felt relieved because a lot of my time was going into preparing for the interviews um, and I was like behind with my A-level work and stuff like that so I could finally focus on studying for my exams um, and I, I made myself not really care about or not obsessed over how I did because I knew that I need to move on and focus on my exam. The school was quite good at sort of outlining the deadlines and maybe what, you should, maybe what you're doing, but I think most of the most useful bit was go through resources yourself because it's quite difficult to tackle one of those questions in like an hour session or something. Um, it's really something to do in your own time. And there are a few other people who are applying um, who I did sort of anger practice for, for instance, and yeah. That's, I think those were, were sort of generally more useful than what my school provided me with. What school did you go to? I'm not telling you. <laughs> I had one mock interview with a teacher at my school. Um, and then I'd say my friends and I, we were all applying to different STEM um, universities anyway, like STEM degrees at different universities together. So we sort of helped each other where possible, asking each other questions and then the other person would run through it as they would run through in an interview. My school thought the personal statement was everything and it's not. So I had a really good personal statement, I think. But then apart from that, I had zero help for anything else. No mock interviews. My dad tried to give me a mock interview, but he studied classics, which means, which means that when he tried to ask me some questions about maths, he can't tell me whether I got the question right or wrong, which basically means that that mock interview is worthless. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Dad. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Um, in terms of applying um, to Cambridge, I did get a lot of guidance. Um, and that's because a lot of people were applying to um, Cambridge. So, I, as I said, I, get, I got help with ANGA and also uh, my school uh, arranged some mock interviews so they convinced some of the teacher to just ask us random questions like related to the subject that we're applying to. So the career service asked us if we, want, if we wanted to a mock interview and they arranged a mock interview with an, a Cambridge alumni who okay. studied chemical engineering. Um, the interview format wasn't really you know, comparable, the like Cambridge interview was a little more technical, but the mock interview focused more on like say behavioral questions or stuff like that, but it was still helpful just to you know, get a sense of what that interview actually is like. How much effort did you put into your personal statement? How much effort did I put into my personal statement? Yeah. Um, I, I submitted the second draft as my, as my final one, um, because my first one was too overdramatic, apparently. I was being too, like, I was using my English language skills too intensely for, <laughs> for what they actually wanted. The word passionate showed up one too many Yeah, times. the word passionate. The word passionate is very important, <laughs> yeah. So in the second interview, it was more of a discussion. So the interviewer would explain a new concept. We talked about AC analysis, which I've never been done before the interview. And he showed me, you know, the basic concepts, how to do it, and we did some derivations together. It was a bit like, you know, he was trying to teach me something and he wanted to see how well I, you know, I responded, I guess. So that was quite fun. I suppose I answered some of the questions, right? I mean, when I, when I did get into, um, into issues, you know, I, I think I sort of focused on the hints that the interviewer was telling me and they sort of break down the problem for you. So if you manage to answer each sub bit of the question, then, you know, you're probably doing okay. I was really good at explaining through my thinking. So uh, I had practiced quite a lot with people, just um, explaining, uh, explaining st uh, my thinking and stuff like that. 
So I was very communicative and I think that really helped because as soon as you start talking to the um, interviewer, then uh, they usually will also give you hint. They know where you're stuck. What went well? Well, what went well is my communication. So I normally pride myself on like my uh, don't give me this face. Okay, for the reference of the camera, I'm being given a face by the uh, interviewer here. Um, no, I pride myself on being able to talk quite well to interviewers and like come across well. So I, I like that's what went well. What went well was that I talked well to the people. What didn't go so well was the fact that I was having to do maths on the spot. And as I mentioned before, I'm not a fast thinker. So this is, a, this is like a real problem for me when someone's just like, oh yeah, just rearrange this expression to get the answer. I'm like, this is going to take me five minutes, please. What are you doing to me? <laughs> In one of my interview, actually my second one, it was more practical. I had to present a project, an engineering project that I did. Yeah. And um, they started asking me like very specific questions. I, I generally spent 15 minutes just not getting anywhere and then they just give me the answer that they were expecting me to give and they just moved on. Just being nervous I think. Um, there's no point in cramming interview prep the night before. Just you know honestly just relax, calm down, do yoga, meditation, I don't know. <laughs> anything that you know anything that keeps you calm yeah. um, and I think that would have been beneficial I got the wrong answer. I don't think he was that bothered about getting the wrong answer. I think I was bothered yeah. because interviews in the past had always been about getting the right answer. Yeah. But actually, he was more, you've got the wrong answer. I'll tell you why it's wrong. Can you, well, sorry, no, I'll give you the techniques to figure out why it's wrong. Can you tell me why you're wrong and what the correct answer would be? Yeah, sure. So Trinity uh, has a, an interview test. You take an hour-long test uh, right before your first interview. And it's 10 questions, you have an hour, but they're quite difficult. So uh, I wasn't able to finish the entire thing. Mm. But then again, I don't, I don't think they expected you to be able to do the whole paper in an hour. 